Thanks for joining me on this journey towards which will never be achieved, the ultimate survival and the ultimate medical kit. It's a journey because there is no destination. There are way stops, there's points. And when you're on the trail, sometimes things like this that are on the inside really shine and you can share them with individuals and just go through the thought patterns and process of, of, of thinking about these things. And it's a little think piece, right? And so today's episode is dedicated to a friend of mine, PJ. This one's for you. Appreciate you more than you know. And I really appreciate the advice you've given me as of late. It's given me quite a bit of peace. It's also given me that place where it's sort of like standing in a river and the river keeps flowing. And I like that. But right now is a great point in, in the process of, 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 of building the ultimate survival kit. Now we'll get into the contents, not today, because that is an entirely, two probably two episodes here, way, way depth. There's so many things inside here for our survival that are just as significant, way more significant than this, but this is sort of like Tutankhamun's tomb, right? The amount of care that I put and thought that I put into these tins also flows into the container itself and how we can make that the best it can be. And so this is the iteration. This is the prototype where we're at now for the med kit. And I am really happy with it. It's fun. What I'm really proud of is the illustration, mostly because it's actually three paintings in one. It's a visual spectrum painting, it's a UV painting, and it's a glow-in-the-dark painting, each of those requiring different layers to achieve the final effect. But as far as the visual, I love it. It looks like an old-school illustration with a little Easter egg in there. It's got a floor mat there. So how did we get this? You know, it started out quite, quite simply just, you know, sketches. And I'll show you some, you know, kind of more late stage stuff. The top, bottom had some ideas. That merged in a proof of concept with colors, trying to limit the spectrum to three, four pigments. But then kind of wanted to lighten it up a bit and add a little more detail to the foliage, foliage. And then add a little, you know, a little, little hut. So with that, I'll show a slideshow now do of, of, of how this progressed from basically those sketches you just saw into stages where I took photographs. It's hard within these tins to have a kind of angle on the camera that allows me to show you sketching without getting weird. I'm going to do a better job of that in the future. But for now, we got those still frames. The key is patience. And as you'll see, building up the layers took a lot of that and understanding the different kind of mediums I'm using. So I would advise if you're going to try to simulate, what do you call that grid stuff? Pegboard. Basically simulating that pegboard. Uh, testers paint, if you use a Sharpie, the Sharpie seems to want to bleed. I've been using these Copics um, and I've had better better results if you let them dry between coats for at least 24 hours. So just a little precaution on that. I still need to hit this with clear, but I'm happy with this. I think, I think the minimalist approach, so we've got a UV. So when this hits with UV, that goes, all of this is glow in the dark and the survival kit is the native metal that we did a negative on. So in dark that shows through as text. I think the simplicity of it here is great. Things that I've already improved upon is, again, just kind of like taking a step back, 
keeping it simple. Um, the real artwork though, and the real fun is with, <laughs> with, with the illustration. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. The rest of the video is, is more like an instructable. So have fun with it. If you want, just let it go. See all the individual steps, how I spray painted them, how I masked them off, what I use a frisket. I would say use a frisket, don't use a masking tape. The masking tape left a residue, which is not fun. All right, so I should mention the pigments that I used. So for the background visual, I used a green gouache, a luminous, actually it says almost orange. That's not the right one. Where's my luminous red? There you go. Luminous red, grabbed the wrong one. Um, a green and then a metallic blue. I just love the metallic nature. And I use this uh, blue violet on this version. However, I don't think that is necessary. Um, so for UV, this is UV responding. Add a little green layer and add a blue layer of these fluorescent testers. And you get those reflective properties that you see with all those pigments. So the UV, you can see the red, the green, and the blue are really respondent to UV light. And then finally, I tested out these glow-in-the-dark magic flies, and they did a fine job. You have to layer them quite thickly. However, after doing so, um, you'll see the results. And with that, let's segue into those results, into the video where I go through all three stages. So enjoy that. Enjoy the rest of the video. Talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day. PJ, have a great day. Amanita mascara, med kit, got the snakes. This is what makes it super cool. So that's regular light. Let's add a little UV. Cut the normal light. So the UV give it this kind of crazy electric effect. But we're not done. Glow in the dark. Let's just four, three, two. Who run Barter Town? Who run Barter Town? You know who. Say. Master Blaster. Say loud. Master Blaster. Master Blaster what? Master Blaster runs Bada Town. And that works in Thunderdome. But you know what works in backpacking? Master. Medical kit. Patch you up. Keep you good to go. Fire survival kit. Contact people. Do a lot of other fun things. Master, Blasta, run backpacking town. So what are we doing here? You know what? I'm kind of sick of the old standard Altoids tins out there. Figured I'd come up with some concepts. So this one, and I'm using a UV ink. And I'll give you a little sneak preview. One second. Boom, shaka laka, boom. We got reflective stuff going. You might also notice we got some glow-in-the-dark stuff. Experimenting, folks, and we're having fun with it. So check it out. The UV stuff's kind of neat. I think it'll be good if you had a UV light, lose something in the dark. Um, I used UV, found UV uh, hair nets, hair ties, I should say, that also reflect. So this is kind of just a nice little hidden feature, so to speak. But what I'm really here and really interested in is kind of coming up with a new way of looking at these tins. So I'm kind of concept is an old pegboard, like my old dad's garage, with kind of a pegboard background here as well. I'm going to put a striker there for matches. But I want the metal to shine through where it says survival kit. So. I've got this glow-in-the-dark paint, I've got this UV paint, 
all kind of part of the proof of concept for that. Same with the blue. Um, bottom here though, I've got kind of a different concept. This was first early idea, kind of cutting out, but uh, having a cross in there for medical kit and then having that uh, two snakes for symmetry for med kit. So that's gonna be that. And then on the bottom, here's a better drawing. So it's kind of the concept for the top of the tin there. Looks something like that. And then the bottom, I'm gonna do a mushroom, but I'm gonna use glow in the dark paints to see if I can't give this like kind of a cool day look and then a nighttime look. So that's kind of neat. The lids, kind of similar, just doing a little bit of uh, concept work. I'm not gonna be painting the inside of the lids here like I did in this proof of concept because that just gets worn through going on and off. But I am gonna be doing the outside layers after I mask off these edges. But let's look at this. I did mask off and I got to this point. So it might be fun just to reveal. It's pretty cool. Kind of like that. Kind of like that blue over the black. Because in the light, that blue is pretty transparent. I mean, you can tell a bit, but wow, that kind of really lights it up, doesn't it? I dig it. So from a proof of concept, I like it a lot. I think that's fun. Sweet. I'll tell you what, this UV light is just makes it so magical. Like iridescent, metallic almost, simultaneously with normal light. It's just wicked. It's super cool. And I didn't do very much detail on I did very quick detail on the wintergreen, but if I spend some time, I can get that nailed. But wow, it just looks electric. Definitely darker than the standard blue tin. However, I don't mind. It's still kind of stealthy. I'm gonna definitely have to clear coat this when I'm done with the top. Um, so probably do the tops last. Now that our tins have been cleaned, nice and pretty, I'll show you how to take them apart. Really just kind of peel back on this like a shrimp. And just come apart. We don't want to fatigue these too much. So kind of keep it light. So I'll show you how I'm masking these. On the lids, they're all gonna be, um, Mass flat, we don't want anything to rub because this is the contact point where it's gonna sit on the tin itself. So we mask that off with this, which is this itch, half inch tape. And that's the first step. Second step is cut the corners, kind of like that. And then come back with tape on the outside so you don't have to bend over because there's gonna be a gap there. So it's better just to cover it up so then you can bend this back because we're gonna put our lettering in there and then i'll finish that bottom part so yeah that's how we we uh kind of go through the steps so step one step two fray around the edge and then step three finish the back so that's how we're doing the lids now for the the medical kits 
I just want to mask that bottom. So that's what I've done. I've just done a good job of not worried about overspraying the bottom. But on the sides, that's perfect. We're going to hit that with white. And this is how it looks before. And I just kind of fray these edges so you can go and bend them down. You don't want them to do too tight. You want to be able to take them up easy. So kind of a trick on that. But for these, at the roll inside, so I've got this tape and this is for our pegboard. So we're going to paint the inside white and then glow in the dark so it'll pop out more. So that's the prep on these guys. Let's see the next step. We're at a fun point in the process. So our model here, I was able to kind of split test this. So this is with masking tape. And you can see there's a residue, which will be covered up with the white paint. However, the goal is that this is going to form a negative where the tin shines through. So unfortunately, med kit, all that stuff's going to have that same residue at the end. Not too big of a deal. I'm going to clear it. But uh, a lot different than the frisket. And this has been, this is basically a film, a clear film that <clears throat> is really nice. The downside with this, unlike the masking tape, is I can draw with a pencil on the masking and then come in with a, a Sharpie or a water soluble pen, black pen to make out the outlines. Whereas this, you have to eyeball it and do it a little more perfectly. So they both have their their points, positives and negatives. We'll see how this. So the goal here is this for the med kit. We're gonna we're gonna white this, then we're gonna hit it with a um, glow in the dark on top of that white, and then we're gonna hit the outside with the fluorescent blue. After that, we're gonna clear it. And after that, I mean, we're going to take the the masking out and then we'll clear it. So we'll have multiple layers of color and uh, purpose there. Starting, we'll preserve the tin, the metal feel and look, hopefully. As for the tins for the survival kit, we're going to emulate this guy. Uh, so I've got a way of doing that. So we've, we've primed these. I'm, I'm going to, before I hit these, these two, with glow-in-the-dark. I'm going to grid these off with a very fine pencil, like a 0.3, so that I'll know where my holes are in the pegboard simulation. These other guys, you're going to hit with uh, glow-in-the-dark right away, um, and then they can cure for 24. So hit these with cure. This is just the flat, and so this will serve as uh, kind of the mushroom diagram. So, sweet. That's where we're at. Lots of razor blade work. Lots. This is, I think the artistry is here. In truth, it's the detail here in prepping for everything. The actual painting itself is a layer um, on top that's great. But if you have properly uh, prepared uh, steps before that, you're going to have a lot more success. So when you guys see the process um, of prepping these tins with the glow-in-the-dark paint, we're doing a base layer uh, for, for most of them, uh, a primer, hitting that three times where we want that, uh, after we've masked off the places we want metal to show through. After that, uh, we're uh, and you can uh, sand between these using light sandpaper or steel wool if you'd like. If you get any lumpies, um, that's a smart thing to do. The glow-in-the-dark, however, it's a very strange kind of substance that doesn't truly dry hard in a way. It kind of remains sticky in a sense. So I'm not messing with that. What we're going to do is we're going to apply three coats of that. I've tested that out in the dark room um, for the efficacy of the glow in the dark at three, and it's really good. So we're going to do three coats of glow. And then on top of that, we're doing this uh, testers enamel uh, clear. And that'll give us uh, a nice, basically a base coat to work from. We can paint on top of that. That'll not wear away, have a little bit of durability to it. 
here we are with the types of paint I'm using. I'm just using this interior primer. It does the job. I would think any uh, primer, sandable primer would work just as well. I uh, just need to get that nice white base layer. Trying this Rust-Oleum Glow in the Dark Max. I'll take you into the dark room and, and show you a little test on that. Uh, when all this is done. Stream lacquer. Only takes a couple shots of that. Three coats of this, um, as discussed. So currently where we're at in the, in the process is these guys are done. They've been hit three times, nice glossy. These guys will glow in the dark very well. And I have something to paint on that I'm not too worried about applying an eraser to when these harden. As for the medical or the survival kits, these, if you remember, are not masks except for the edge here. So inside, right now I've got one coat of glow in the dark on those. You can see it's starting to turn green. So I'm gonna hit that two more times, maybe a fourth coat on both of those guys. So we finished our primer on the survival kit. You can maybe see the indentation there. Um, so I got the survival kit and the med kits done. Next step on these is I'm gonna be masking the edge off to apply a UV, uh, UV paint that'll make that stuff glow. So here we are in the laundry room, about to do this dark glow test. Here we go. Whoa! That's cool. Bang! I like that. That's fun. Let's see how long it lasts. Whoa. I've removed the masking on each of these. And while not perfect, it's good enough. It's a little tiny blemish in there, no big deal. A little punchy there. Sand that down once when these harden. But yeah, nice little uh, base coat glow in the dark. So let's see what it looks like now. Five, four, three, two, one. So I've applied a fixative, you can see it there at the glossy, to cover up the central section using the tin border. And now I'm gonna apply a UV blue on the inside of this, give it a little bit of contrast. These are looking good, fixative on both. Here we're about to apply fluorescent high-vis UV blue couple quick strokes. Cowboys, fourth and final coat. Currently, I have three of these base base tins, they look great. That's glow-in-the-dark paint with testers, extreme lacquer over the top. So those are ready to paint. 
we're halfway, a little over halfway through this. Now you can see the masking. That's going to reveal metal coming through. But right now what we've done is we just removed the masking for the blue UV, which is fantastic. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse the masking and then we're going to uh, paint. Sorry, let me get the focus on. We're going to paint this white area. Paint that white area glow in the dark. But we'll have to mask off that blue. Where we are with the red, it's at a fun stage. So this is this UV fluorescent testers paint, Rust-Oleum. Testers is a Rust-Oleum product. So what I've done here is we've masked off the center with this Frixit, Frixit film. And it's, this one's pretty easy because all you have to do is cut out. Cool. Wow, look at that. That is super cool. Let's hit a little UV on it. Ooh, sha la la. It adds a metallic glow quality to it. That's great. I'll clean up the other one in a second. So what I've done here is we've got three coats of white, then we've got three coats of glow in the dark, and I'm trying to get the glare to hit this right. You can see where I've got, I've etched one centimeter squares. And in the center of those squares, we're gonna simulate pegboard much like this prototype was done. And this is done with a Sharpie. Here we have the final, which I'll clear. And it does, it looks like pegboard. Kind of fun. So I figured I'd show you my cheat tools to get, get this done. I basically created this scalloped measuring kit to fit in and then allow me to etch the grid. Conversely, etch right there in the corners, and then I can come across with other things, like a, one piece of paper is cut perfectly to fit in there to draw lines across. And then for the edges, I made this die. So what I do is I put it in there and that gives me the height. So as soon as I get the edging, I just line that up and put the two extra marks in there using this little cheat tool. All of this centimeter hash marks. But that's what gives you the effect and it gives you a good 3D. I measured it out so that this distance, this little small one would be the extension of extension of the normal box. So it gives that kind of 3D effect that folds over nicely. Now the next fun step with this is, is in order to waterproof these, uh, this survival tin and will eventually waterproof these as well, the med kits, uh, I am going to employ on the inside a water, or I should say a glow in the dark gaffers masking tape to cover up those holes from the inside. So we'll have a consistent glow-in-the-dark effect. Try to like 
camouflage those holding, you know, holding up those holes. So on the other side, though, we are going to be using in the survival kit, um, I am going to be applying red electrical tape around the back. And for the blue, of course, I'm going to be using a blue electrical tape. And that's to cover up these holes on the back here. So we'll have blue electrical coming around and then red on the other side. So last but not least, we'll have our uh, other episode on this concept piece of the superstitions inside of a tin. And because I enjoy this so much, I'm going to be doing triplicates of these moving forward so that uh, I will have one to sell, one to hold for the family, and one to hold for a show. So that's the goal. One small detail that is kind of fun on this is I'm waterproofing this and I've replaced this section with a gaffer's glow in the dark tape to cover up these holes. So basically I've cut this to shape and I'm going to place it in and then I'm going to give it a couple clear coats and that'll give it just one last barrier of protection for waterproofing. And there we have our pegboard simulation. I am at a very contemplative stage in this process because I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with each of these pieces and parts, but I am expressly happy with this. The idea of this and its transformative properties where it looks good as a normal painting and you can see the relief there with some of that. It looks good as a regular painting, regular painting but then it's got some cool electric effects caused by the UV. But then it has, you know, the, the, the third ancillary and this charges with UV. It's got the glow in the dark properties which are unique in and of itself. And I had to stack, I had to stack the paint in such a way that all of these effects are maintained. But here we have the final product. And, you know, I think I overdid, I think I overdeveloped the text. Um, not that this is bad by any means, but a little bit of criticism from myself, things that I like. I really like the sparsity of color here. It's just really purposeful in the bottom. It's majority gonna be that glow in the dark off-white, kind of yellowish off-white, greenish yellowish off-white, which is fun because it reminds me of the antique -y feel that you get with a lot of the old illustrations with the yellowing paper, so to speak. Um, things I don't like about this, the background, there's not enough coats of, of glow in the dark. It works not as much as I'd like. I wish I wouldn't have filled in this with the dark, you know, this dark purple blue, um, but that's okay. I think it contrasts well with the, the cross, but I think that heavier blue and I think this, this accent green, I think a little bit overkill and here's what I mean. So we're about to be finished with this and it's kind of we're at the negative spot where um, we've got glow in the dark, UV, playing together nicely, right? These two are friends. You can see it like charging. So that gives us a nice glow effect. But I kind of like the simplicity of this. So what are we kind of thinking is the next gen? Because I, you know, this is our great prototype. What is our next gen? I'm thinking minimalist. I think we're going to outline the cross. We're going to give ourselves a green snake and a blue snake to match those colors and the red, but just keep it super simple and then use the negative for the med kit and the outline as like main design feature. Cause that's fun. Cool. We'll give it a shot. Next steps from here. Pretty simple. Um, going to weed out the, the second survival kit and that's done really by just going over where the junction point is between the, the Frixit underneath and the paint. And I'm just using this really delicately to make sure that when I separate 
that fricks it, it doesn't take paint and detail away. And so it's a little bit of a hassle, but I go through each single letter and then individually take them off. So I'll go through that and this, and at that stage, I'm gonna remask the, the, the tops and then we're gonna clear them. And I'll also clear this bottom guy and this guy. And we'll call this prototype is complete and a working unit and available to give as a gift. Can't, can't wait to send it. Um, it'll be having this top to it. But yeah, we are on to the next steps. All right, to summarize this far on our journey, I believe I am just a couple clear coats away. This is my proof of concept here is done. I've got this pretty cool Amanita mascara illustration that works both in normal light UV and in glow in the dark night. And what a fun proof of concept it is. So what's next for this? Well, this is wrapped up. I'm gonna clear it. Learned a lot. I think I'm very happy with the content of the med kit, the actual mushroom illustration with the little door and stuff is fun. Um, I think that there's some improvements that can be made on the med kit top here. And I think our second round, before I finish all four of them, I think I'm just gonna move on to see what this ultra kind of minimalist version does where you can see the steel, see that reflection. I kind of like that. And I'm simplifying the med kit just to have a couple glow in the dark, a couple UV, and then really just kind of utilizing that metal as, as a, you know, kind of a, a dimensional effect. So this will be our second round. We'll see how these two turn out and I'll do another video on those. But until then, I've got this to send out to my friend and again, PJ. Thank you, bro. I'm looking forward to sending this to you. So have a wonderful day when you get it. Well, that's it. That's the video. Thanks for stopping in. It's rough out there. Love one another. See you soon.